Welcome back everybody. I am in the trailer, the business is open. It is full of good dog and cat toys and treats and all kinds of good stuff, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to show you the power center. I have had a lot of people asking, how did you do it? What did you use to supply 110 volts, 12 volts DC? How did I do it? I wanna show you how. It was really simple and I'm really happy with how it turned out and it's been performing great. I have no complaints. I like to keep things simple and straightforward. So let's get into it. All right, guys, let's take a look at the power center I built here. Remember this trailer was just an empty cargo trailer. So when I got it, uh, I do have two 12 volt batteries that were already installed on the other side of this wall. And then there was a fuse block right in the corner that would supply power to the awning on the side and also the lights, just two little tiny lights that were inside here. So basically I had to come up with a way I wanted to have, you know, shore power so I could hook up even to a generator if I wanted to have 110 volts power. I also wanted to be able to have uh, 12 volts direct current being supplied and also be able to charge the two batteries out front. And that is what this little guy does for me. This is a Progressive Dynamics Model 4135. I'm really happy with it. It's got this little door that you pop down. This is very similar to what you would put put into or find in an RV. Basically, what this does is this allows you to bring shore power in, whether it's from a generator or you're plugged in. That's gonna be 110 volts alternating current. All of that power is on this side. Regular circuit breakers, just like what's in your house. This is a 30 amp breaker coming in. When I turn this off, this tur it turns off all the power in here. Okay, um, this 15 amp breaker, that is for the charging unit, which is mostly down here behind this vent. That charges your batteries and also converts 110 to 12 volt direct current. And then these two here, are just uh, two 20 amp circuits. Um, I probably could have just done 15 amp circuits, but at the moment I thought 20 amp would be better and uh, it's not necessary. But each 20 amp has two plugins. Uh, one goes the outside and then the other one just goes right here to a GFCI 110 volt plug-in. And then from this plug-in, it goes around the corner to this one. So that is gonna be useful for me because I might get a small chest freezer in here. This half here is all of your 12 volt direct current circuitry. So you can have up to one, two, three, four, five, six circuits. This is a main like battery fuse if like somehow you reverse the polarity or something this fuse would protect everything i've got like one circuit for the awning one for lights you know one for this uh little unit i have up up here for charging your phone and stuff i'll show you one for the radio i'm using all 15 amps but you'll see and we can confirm it in the manual too but these numbers here on the side the first one you can go up to 30 amps uh, the others are all 20. See, this is just a battery disconnect switch it's on right now so i can turn it off and my lights my 12 volt lights stay on because this converts 110 to 12 volts dc which is pretty cool and then if i turn the battery back on it begins charging or making sure that it needs to trickle charge my batteries basically so it's pretty cool the only thing i can't do is convert 12 volts direct current into 110 volts alternating current. You would need the uh, power inverter to do that. But one option I do have, this little guy I installed has like a cigarette lighter uh, plug-in. So if we don't have shore power, this will allow me to plug in the power inverter, which will convert 12 volt direct current to 110 volt. And I'll be able to plug something in like a laptop about it, it really, it depends on what size power inverter you buy, but I have one, for example, that's like 150 watts. So I could plug in here and then charge my laptop, no problem. For your phones or other USB charge devices, that's where this comes in handy. It's got two USB charging ports, both at 2.1 amps max. And uh, I use them for an iPad to charge, a scanner, my phone, I haven't had any problems. It works really good. This, I wanted just to be able to monitor 
the battery voltage. So right now you'll see that, that the power unit's holding it at 14, a little over 14 volts. That's great, it's charging it right now. When I turn off this power switch here, it turns everything else off. So you don't have any you know, battery drainage or anything like that. Okay, so it's at 14.3 volts, that's great. That means it's charging the batteries right now because I have the battery switch on. The batteries are on and so is the entire progressive dynamics unit. So like I said, this 15 amp is, is the breaker that supplies the battery charger inside of this unit with power and also supplies 12 volt current to all of these circuits if the batteries are off, right? So basically, if I turn this off, okay, I still have battery power because the batteries are on and the voltage here will slowly drop down to what your battery voltage is. So that's one way you can monitor how, how your batteries are doing. A lot of times um, I'll leave the battery charger off overnight and then I'll come in in the morning and turn this on and just see how the batteries look but I know my batteries are doing good. So if I was to turn off the batteries, you know, now I don't have any power, okay? So I'm gonna leave the batteries off. And then if I come over here and I turn on my progressive dynamic circuit breaker, right? That just gave me power to all of these circuits. It can't charge the batteries because the batteries are off and you'll see what voltage it's supplying. So it's supplying 13.5 volts, which is perfect. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the batteries on right here and you'll see it just stays right there or it begins trickle charging the batteries. Um, but it works great. I love it. I'm very happy with it. You know, and it's the same thing would happen if I turn off the main power, right? That turns off everything. My little light uh, is out now, right? But here it is, This it's going back down to battery voltage. So batteries are on. If I do this, everything's dead, everything's gone. So I turn the batteries back on. I have 12 volts, which at this point, this would be like if I am disconnected from shore power, I could still charge, charge my phones and all that stuff. Or like I said, I could plug in a, a power inverter right here and get a little bit of 110 volt action going on. Um, but if I come back down here and turn on my shore power, bam, it's going to start charging the batteries. The batteries are on. It's just, I really like it. I really like this system. Like I said, the only thing that it can't do is supply you with 110 volts power when, when you're disconnected from shore power. Okay. So this is just a basic radio. I wasn't planning on putting a radio in on the trailer. But uh, when we picked it up, we, we found out that the awning we had installed had speakers in it. So we're like, okay, that's cool. Ran down to Walmart because I knew that they had this really basic radio. It cost like 16 bucks, uh, but it works great. So I just ran some speaker wire and this thing has an aux in, it has USB in, it has Bluetooth and it has radio, so AM, FM. Uh, I just kind of made a makeshift antenna and it seems to work just fine. So pretty happy with that. You can you can turn it off if you want. And I usually have it off because I'm, I'm usually not using it. I've actually got quite a bit of space here if I wanted to add a few more things that I could. Um, but I wanted to make the power center box this big for a couple of reasons. One being that in the directions when you go to install this this power unit, they tell you you need to have about like three cubic feet of air available for it to cool itself. It does have a little fan and some vents right here. So air can come in and then the heat can rise and also come out here naturally. This is just a, a vent I found at Home Depot. So the structure of this thing is actually pretty basic. I built it using basically just some really cheap furring strips that you can find at Home Depot and then some really thin, uh, about 1 8 inch plywood. And then the top, of course, I've got a few pieces of some pine. So I put some poly coat over this whole thing. 
just to give it a nice appearance, a nice natural appearance, and so I can wipe it off if I wanted to. Pretty happy with how this turned out. You pull the one screw out right here, and then this plate pops off. Try and do this one-handed here. It's got these little plastic clips right up here on top that they snap on. There's four of them all the way around. This cover just comes right off. So there you can see the fan running and cooling the whole area that supplies 12 volts direct current and also charges the batteries and the 12 volt circuits with their fuses, the 110 volt circuit breakers, and all of the 110 volt wiring coming in and going to their bus bars. This is actually quite secure. It's held on with four screws. All right, so I took the screws out and so this whole unit will slide right out because I left enough slack in all the wires. Okay, and this unit's really not all that big. It's got some cooling vents on it and not too bad of a bird's nest. I would like to make this look a little cleaner, but um, I have seen way, way worse. All right, let's take the top off here. You'll see the plywood is not very thick, about an eighth inch. You can see I cut three holes for the vent that's on the outside. And here you can see the back of the radio. And then this is the back of that little 12 volt power center with the voltmeter. Pretty simple to wire up, you just use spade terminals. And I've got uh, the one GFCI 110 volt outlet plug right there. And that is going to go over to the second plug in line. So it will also be GFCI protected. Here we are with the power unit out and I've got a light on the inside. Okay. So this right here is power coming in from the outside. It's a 30 amp hookup, just like you'd see on an RV. And I've got, I believe, six gauge wire coming in. That's the black one. Okay, and that's gonna go right into my power unit here. And I have a ground wire, which is going to the, the ground bus bar right up there. That's the same ground for everything. Goes to the frame. And then all of these wires here are gonna be the 12 volt circuits coming out of the unit. Uh, one of course being the battery coming in and also the charging supply. Okay, and then you just hook these up. See, see this first one is a little bit thicker gauge than the rest. That's because this one is rated for uh, 30 amps and the others are rated for only 20 amps. So right below my 20 amp plug-in, you'll see the main battery power disconnect switch right there. So those are both actually ground, so when I turn the batteries on and off, it just cuts the battery off via the ground supply. Uh, over there on the floor, I've got a couple of cables going out to the battery right here and right here, okay? So let me talk about how I built this. First, come up with how big you want it, but basically first I made two panels, this being one panel here, Okay, and then this being the second panel on the side. And you make these panels by using these, these strips of wood. I think they call them furring strips. Make yourself a frame, cut out a piece of plywood the same size and staple the plywood and even use glue if you want to the frame. So now you have this panel. This is one panel, right? And then this is the second panel, okay? and I screwed it into this panel. Look at the top here. Okay, this is one panel, this is the other panel. How do you secure this to the wall? How do you secure this to the floor? I screwed some of the furring strips to the floor right behind the panel, and then same right here. So when you go to install your panel, right, that has the frame and the plywood, you just screw that panel right to that footer right on the inside, okay? Same thing on this side. Screw this panel to its own footer that's right on the inside. Now, 
How do you secure the sides to the wall? Well, it gets a little tricky and this is where you have to be creative because, gee, it would be nice to secure this panel straight to the wall, but there's no stud here, okay? I don't have a stud until right here to right here. So what I came up with was I took this three quarter inch piece of uh, wafer board and I cut it out, right? It goes right up there. But I put a whole bunch of screws straight into the stud on this side all the way down. So then when I got my panel, I just ran screws through the panel into this piece. And it's actually quite strong. It is very, very strong. It doesn't want to move at all. The other side was a little tricky because it's not a perfectly square trailer. I actually have a V-nose trailer, so I had to deal with an angle. But the good news is I had a stud there. So I basically ripped a two by four at an angle and I screwed it straight to the stud. That's this, this one right in the corner, okay? And that little piece there, that's just to secure this top piece too. There's a couple of screws there. That's all that's for. But this main piece right in the corner is what I have this whole panel secured to. Ran screws right straight into it. I didn't want to buy one whole piece of wood. I was trying to be on a budget. And so I just used two pieces on top and I just cut it until I made it fit. And then used a couple of small recessed head screws and screwed it down and then cut a couple of trim pieces in there to fit um, and I left this area here easy for me to unscrew and take off so if I need to I can get in there overall though I am very happy with how this turned out it has been working really well I have no complaints here's something to consider also is put a pass through in your trailer you could use this for anything that you need to uh, my main idea is that if during the summer it's hot and I wanna have one of those portable air conditioners in here, I could vent the warm air vent hose right out this hole. I think it's big enough to, to help cool the inside. But it's winter right now, and so right now I have a propane hose coming inside to this little heater. Thanks for watching, you guys. I hope this video helps somebody out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and I'm also gonna leave a link that takes you to our business's website. So if you have a dog or a cat and you wanna look around and check it out, feel free to do so. We're also on social media. Search Local Paws Redmond. All right guys, as always, keep it classy. See you later. This is a pretty good dog toy right here. Bucktooth Llama. Yep, yep, Bucktooth Llama. Anybody? Hey, 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 hey.